Hey, what is happening, you sus sawsbuck? Today we're talking Torterra EX. This is a card that in my set review, I said doesn't quite have enough potential to make it onto my buy list. And I don't think it's gonna be competitively viable, but I think it is gonna be a ton of a fun, ton of fun anyways. And the other day on the stream, I did come up with a build. So that's what I'm sharing with y'all here today. Uh, before we jump to that though, gotta give a big shout out to Dragon Shield, sponsoring me and everything I do here on the YouTube channel. Uh, they're my preferred sleeves of choice long before i was sponsored by them and i highly recommend them i personally enjoy the matte dragon shields but they got the dual mats and the classics over there as well check them out dragonshield.com link of course will be in the description and you can use code azul gg as well to get yourself a discount okay jump into it with the torterra to begin with now we don't really use the second attack for a uh, grass and two cults it does 150 we're using that first attack for each grass Pokemon in play, we do 30 damage. So if we get five grass Pokemon on our bench, plus the Torterra in the active, we're looking at 180 damage, which knocks out the Charizard EX, probably the biggest Pokemon in the upcoming format. And we 2 hit KO pretty much everything else in the format as well. Any multi-prize Pokemon, we're 2 hit KOing. Any one prize Pokemon, we're 1 hit KOing. And we have 340 HP, and that really is the power of the Torterra EX. Ton of HP, doing a solid amount of damage. I only play two of them here. And I would definitely consider a third, but I think I would actually go with another Super Rod before I considered a third Torterra EX. Currently, I have one Super Rod in here, but I've definitely already been thinking about including a second. And we'll talk about that as we get a little bit further into the deck. We do have one of the baby Torterras, whatever you want to call it, the Evil Press Torterras. 50 damage for each of our Evolution Pokemon in play. So this caps out at about 300 damage, which is still pretty good, especially on a one prizer. I think it'd be nice just to have a one prizer in here, potentially. This might get cut for another Torterra EX or a Super Rod, but currently I like the idea of one to kind of force that odd prize trade into our opponent, depending on the matchup. So one Torterra. We don't have any energy acceleration in this deck, but if our Torterra EX survives for a turn, which we're hoping it does multiple times throughout a game, we can then find time to build up energy for the Evo Press Torterra at that point. We got four Grottle in here. The main engine of the deck is the Grottle with that sun drenched sh shell. Excuse me. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a grass Pokemon. Reveal it, then put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. Super powerful ability on a stage one Pokemon or on any Pokemon. It needs to be really good on a basic as well, obviously. As long as the, well, if it was on a basic, it would be kind of broken for whatever type it had it. On a stage one, super, super good. If it's, you know, stage two evolution is good. And we finally have a decent stage two evolution for the Grottle. This Torterra is okay. Like the reversal Torterra deck is like, all right. Evil Press reversal Torterra deck. The Torterra EX though is definitely a step above this Torterra. So we're finally going to see this Grottle see a little bit more play. And the, like I said, the Grottle super powerful. Grottle's just kind of been left out without a powerful stage two until right now. Uh, got the Turtwig in here. Unfortunately has 80 hp but pretty cool ability reduces the damage it takes by attacks by 30 or actually i believe it's actually 20 reduces the damage it takes from attacks by 20. it's in japanese i don't read japanese and i forget the exact translation it reduces the damage it takes by 20 or 30 which still keeps us protected from the greninja which is really really nice reduces by 20. so greninja snipes it we take 70 we survive with 10 hp i would prefer if the tur uh the turtwig here had 70 hp though so we could buddy buddy puffin for it that is going to be one of the hindrances to this deck's consistency, I feel like a little bit in the early game, is gonna be getting the Turtwigs into play aggressively. You're gonna have to rely on Nest Balls, unfortunately, instead of the Buddy Poffins, which are a lot more efficient at getting Pokemon into play. Up next, we've got uh, three Cottony, which evolve into the new Whimsicott. The new Whimsicott's ability says we can heal all the damage from our active grass Pokemon, and then we discard all energy attached to that Pokemon. And Torterra EX's first attack only takes one grass energy to do 180 damage, so we can be dealing 180. We get punched back, we heal it all off with Whimsicott, and then we attach for turn, and we're attacking again for that 180. So 3-2 Whimsicott line. I went pretty heavy on the support Pokemon's base uh, base counter Pokemon. This could maybe be a little bit less. I was theorizing maybe like a heavy ball plus some super, more super rods would be good as well. Uh, but currently added to a 3-2 of the Whimsicott. I also have a 3-2 of Toad Scroll. Uh, I went with this Toad's Cool. It seemed like the best one overall with the Furious Kicks having some option to deal some damage if we open it. And for the Toad Scroll count, I have got a 1-1 one, one split. We got the Slime Mold Colony. <clears throat> cards in your opponent's discard pile can't be put into their hand by the effects of your opponent's abilities or trainer cards. So this specifically is really good up against Chi and Pao and Golden Go. That's what that's in here for. And then we've got the Toad Scroll EX. Any of our Pokemon to play with an energy attached to them 
uh prevents all effects of attacks from our opponent's pokemon and the attack is 80 damage for two grass energy plus 40 more damage for each energy grass energy on our benched pokemon so not really here for the attack just here for the ability the big thing that this is stopping is star requiem up against lost tina i actually got a pretty cool tech in here to even protect ourselves further from the lost tina so the toad school tech cards prevent the effects of attacks like i said sableye lost tina that's what the toad school ex is in here for and then the other toad school is in here for the uh, superior energy retrievals of golden go and chien pao and like i said i got a three two line of each of the tech pokemon but i could see like maybe cutting a toad uh toad school and a uh cottony here for a second super rod and a heavy ball to just make sure we can more consistently find our lines of pokemon with the heavy ball and then if they do get targeted down and focus off the bench we have the second super rod to help recover them quickly because we can like super rod them back into the deck and then just grotto finds them immediately because our bench is going to look something like torterra ex in the active two grotto on the bench and then the support pokemon lined up to fill out the other three bench slots depending on where we're up against there also are some other grass pokemon to maybe consider as like one one lines um or maybe we cut back completely on the toad school line and completely cut it there's like a cricket tune that increases grass pokemon's hp by, by 40 that could be a consideration for sure so there are some other things to consider in here as far as grass pokemon techs go we don't play anywhere candy but there's also a beautifly that draws up to six cards once during your turn um but it is a stage two so we have to involve our candy which i don't play anywhere candy right now and the last pokemon we play in here is a pidgeot v and i play the pidgeot v in here because we are an arvin build arvin tm evo build and i do play one four seal stuff uh let's get into the trainer cards real fast or the supporter cards uh we do have those four arvin tm evo build like i mentioned one four seal stone gonna be looking to go turn one turn two if we go first tm evo get the grottles in play and then the grottles kind of find everything else so i actually don't even play any ultra ball right now which i'm not gonna lie we maybe need one or two just in case we whiff the tm evo and need to train chain grottles out but i'd maybe just play more tm evo to be honest uh for iono for our draw supporter and disruption supporter to turo so we've got the whimsicott in here that we can use to heal our torterra and then we attach a grass energy and then we could turo the whimsicott and reset the whimsicott which would be ideal the really cool thing about the whimsicott is it can be searched out with grottle so we can use grottle to find whimsicott heal our torterra Put another grass energy on Torterra, attack again with Torterra, and then we could Turo the Whimsicott and reset it, and then bench the Cottony back onto the bench. So that way, if our opponent disrupts our hand, Roxanne, Judge, Iono, we can then just once again use Grottle, find Whimsicott, Whimsicott heals our Torterra, repeat. Uh, so I do like the count of Turo in here as well. And that's why we, we definitely prefer the Whimsicott as our healing option. And then if we are going to use Turo to heal, we like to heal with Whimsicott and then Turo the Whimsicott. Because if we just heal with the Whimsicott and then hold the Turo, we can't guaranteed find the Turo through Grotto like we can the Whimsicott. So one boss's orders. And then we start to get into the items here. I've got two Poke Gear. Specifically, I'm trying to increase my odds of finding that turn one Arvin to find the TM Evolution. So two Poke, Poke Gear help us with that. Like I said, Turtwake unfortunately has 80 HP. That sucks. So we do have to play Nest Balls in here to help find the Turtwigs. Uh, the rest of our Pokemon, though, the Toad Scroll, the Cottony, can be found through the Buddy Poffin. So I do ha still have three Buddy Poffin in here. We probably only need to play one, maybe two Buddy Poffin throughout a game. I still play a decently high count in three, because starting, starting with one in the opening hand can th then make it easier for our Arvin to go get Nest Balls and stuff like that. So I think we just want a high count of being able to find our basic Pokemon. So Buddy Poffin, unfortunately can't find the Churchwig, but can find the other one, so that's still pretty good um we are looking for that turn one tm evo so to increase our odds of getting that off we do play two earthen vessel so basically anything we open with we can arvin to get ourselves the vessel in the tm evolution and then we can attach to the active and then evolve some pokemon to play probably grottles uh, another cool thing about the earthen vessels is that it does search your deck for two energy so like later in the game if we use one of these to find an energy to attack with the torterra we'll have that other grass energy in hand so then if we use whimsicott on our next turn we'll have our backup energy already ready to go i could definitely see increasing the odd of the earthen vessels here to be honest maybe just more grass energy would be good as well also more super rods to put more grass energy back in our deck could also be pretty good only one super rod in here currently i do like the idea of multiple super rod in case we're in situations where our opponent is just like targeting down our cottonies and our whimsicots or our toad scroll in those specific matchups as well be able to consistently and aggressively super rod recover them especially when we have so much access to finding super rod with the arvin sounds pretty good so currently just one super rod definitely requires some testing to see if we if i think i'd actually need more uh, with the arvin being able to find you know whatever we want i also include a counter catcher in here as well we're not a super aggressive deck we're definitely gonna be falling behind at multiple points throughout games most of the time so we will be able to make a use of the counter catcher at multiple points probably and yeah so it combos with the arvin basically turning arvin into a gust effect i don't play the prime catcher in here as the a spec so otherwise that could do that as well 
one switch in here same reason as uh the, the counter catcher kind of it's like i would like to be able to turn my arvin into all these other utility options like a gust effect or like a switch card switch cards in here are okay we've got a couple pokemon with the heavier retreat cost in the toad scroll but i do play the turos which would be able to move the toad scroll as well if our opponent tried to trap the toad scrolls in the active but it would be nice to have a way to aggressively find to aggressively move our pokemon around through arvin just trying to abuse arvin as much as possible is what i'm trying to do here uh, two tm evolution of course as like i said that's like our main way we're finding our pokemon team evolution set up grottle grottle finds literally everything else one rigid band so the rigid band is a tool card that reduces the damage our stage one pokemon take by 30 so it doesn't work on the torterra the reason i have this included and i may be getting a little bit ahead of myself with this one but i thought it was so cute and i really love the idea of the synergy in the matchup that i wanted to include it we can put this on our toad scroll ex and then we can get a grass energy on a torterra and a to the toad scroll ex against lost tina and then lost tina can't star requiem ko the torterra or the toad scrolly x and they also can't boss or counter catcher and then lost impact the toad scrolly x and then follow that up with star requiem requiem our torterra if we have a rigid band in here on our toad scroll some lost tinas do play vacuum this is maybe a little bit too cute but i love the idea of it so much that i included it for right now also you could like put this on the baby toad scroll to like stop uh, chi and pals from being able to more easily KO your toad scroll or specifically iron hands being able to like amp it very much so that's kind of cool as well i guess because that's going to be like the main strategy of the chi and pal player is to amp your toad scroll for two prize cards i would assume if not they're probably just losing the game so being able to like slow down their prize trade and forcing them into a chi and pow to have to KO instead of an iron hands sounds kind of cool as well uh, i do have the maximum belt in here i didn't put the hero's cape in the extra hp didn't seem necessary torterra already having 340 hp is kind of a lot um more hp against something like shampoo could be good but with the toad scroll in here i think that already kind of covers that matchup the maximum belt is really good at helping us ko these ex pokemon the iron hands the chi and pow um and even though they might not be one hit KOing us if we're not one hit KOing them that gives them a lot of time so this really puts the the pressure on them gives them a shorter clock to work with to actually figure out a way to get through or get around our torterra so i really like the idea of the maximum belt the heroes the heroes cape kind of seems like too much unnecessary that extra 100 hp uh, so i mentioned the four seal stone in here the main reason i'm including this four seal stone actually comes up with our next card so this is for the pidgeot obviously we have the pidgeot arvin for four seal stone kind of cool we can nest ball for the pidgeot whatever and the main reason i include the pidgeot and include the four seal stone is because i was like i think we can't beat charizard unless we can lost zone their radiant charizard and we don't really have a good way to find our stadium cards with this current setup so i was like all right Let's get the Pidgeot in there. Let's get the four seal stone in there. And that will allow us to find Lost City, which then allows us to Lost Zone the Radiant Charizard and not have to worry about it. And then possibly, I think that could be enough to beat Charizard. I don't know. I've been playing games with this deck. It's my first take, just like all my other builds so far. All of them are first takes, just my Pokemon knowledge and experience being put into an idea in a future format. So yeah, got the Lost City in here for that. I think this gives us a chance against Charizard. Without this, they could probably just Radiant Charizard us twice. That's tough to deal with. That's a lot of, that's a pretty poor prize exchange uh, against us. And then maybe a couple bosses with some Charizards. But who knows? Maybe the prize exchange is so good for us because Charizard can't one hit KO Torterra, but Tor Torterra can one hit KO Charizard. So even if they get a Radiant Charizard attack or two off, maybe that's not enough for them to win games. You know, especially for Ionoing them, it's going to be hard for them to recover the Radiant Charizard, get it into play, get an energy on it. So we might not need this. This might be unnecessary for the matchup, to be honest. But I like the idea of it. So I've uh, got it in there for right now. But if it doesn't become necessary for the matchup, you could cut all of these. You could cut the Pidgeot for Seal Stone and the Lost City. Add some more consistency. That second Super Rod I was talking about. And for the energy count, I have seven. Uh, it's maybe a little bit low, but I think I would add more. I think I would add more vessels before I added more energy, especially because of like how Vessel can combo with Grottle. Like we don't need all of our grass Pokemon throughout a game. Like if we're not even playing up against a matchup where we need the Toad Scrolls, we can Grottle for Toad School and Toad School and Toad School EX and then use our Vessel to discard those to go get our energy. Um, so I feel like Z Vessel synergizes super, super well with this deck because then we have multiple energy in our hand to then combo with the Whimsicott um, or the Turo's scenario. So I got seven right now. Like I said, I think if I did more, I would just play more vessels in fact i could even see like cutting one of these to actually add maybe a third vessel i don't know how far we could go we could go like 
Go down to five for four vessels. Maybe that's the way to go. I could see it. I could see it, to be honest. Currently, I have seven, though. Currently, I have seven. We do want a decent count. And then uh, at some point, we might want like a second super rod, which would help with this as well. But yeah, I got seven, seven grass energy for now. Uh, and that's my first take on the Torterra. Yeah, I got a little techie with this build compared to some of the other builds I've been throwing at you. But uh, yeah, I just got so into that thought process of the Rigid Band, the Lost City for the Charizard matchup. I really like those cool ideas. So yeah, try them out or cut them out and just add some more consistency and start there. That's usually what I recommend. No text, just straight consistency. Um, but I was theorying the matchups on stream the other day when I was building the deck. So kind of landed on a little bit more tech out of a build that I've been throwing at you with the other first takes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace.